Hey everyone, today is May 13th, 2021, and we will be reading 1 Samuel 9 and 10, John 15, 1 through 17, Psalm 119, 25 through 32, and Proverbs 15, 27 and 28. So let's read that. Before I get into that, um, just a couple notes from yesterday's reading. John 14, 15 through 31 was our New Testament reading for yesterday. And I was just talking to Kira about it a few minutes ago, just rereading that again. It is such an incredible portion of scripture. Um, when we read about who God, who Jesus says he is, and the difference between loving Jesus and obeying Jesus and that um, obeying Jesus is not the same as loving Jesus. Um, we, we love, we, yes, we love Jesus first and then obeying comes as a result. And uh, we, my wife and I were talking about um, a John Piper sermon from 2012, I think it was 2011, 2012, where he preaches on this portion of scripture. And he says that, um, the obedience is a reflex of our love for, and a regenerated uh, spirit and a regenerated um, reborn soul. And that's just like such a great way to think about it, right? Our obedience to Christ and to God is not how we love him, but it is a reflex of the fact that we do love him and that Christ sent his Holy Spirit to enter our hearts and to give us a new heart in order that we may love him. It's incredible. So again, John 14, it's really wonderful. I encourage you to reread it if, if you can. So getting back to today's reading, uh, today's May 13th, we'll jump into 1 Samuel 9 through 10. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, son of Zeror, son of Becherath, son of Aphia, a Benjaminite, a man of wealth. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a handsome young man. There was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. So Kish said to Saul, his son, Take one of the young men with you and arise, and go. Go and look for the donkeys. And he passed through the hill country of Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalishah. But they did not find them. And they passed through the land of Shalim. But they were not there. Then they passed through the land of Benjamin, but did not find them. When they came to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let us go back, lest my father cease to care about the donkeys and become anxious about us. But he said to him, Behold, there is a man of God in this city, and he is a man who is held in honor. All that he says comes true. So now let us go there. Perhaps he can tell us the way we should go. Then Saul said to his servant, But if we go, we can. Uh, what can we bring the man? For the bread in our sacks is gone, and there is no present to bring him to bring to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered Saul again, Here, I have with me a quarter of a shekel of silver, and I will give it to the man of God to tell us our way. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he said, Come, let us go up to the seer, for today's prophet was formerly called a seer. And Saul said to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went to the city where the man of God was. As they went up the, went up the hill to the city, they met a young woman coming out of, to draw water and uh, and said to them, sorry, they met young women coming out to draw water and said to them, is the seer here? They answered, he is. Behold, he is just ahead of you. Hurry, he has just now come down to the city because the people have a sacrifice today on the high place. As soon as you enter the city, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people will not eat until he comes, since he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those who are invited will eat. Now go up, for you will meet him immediately. So they went up to the city, 
As they were entering the city, they saw Samuel coming out toward them on his way up to the high place. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed to Samuel, Tomorrow about this time I will send to you a, a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him to be prince over my people Israel. He shall save the, my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have seen my people, because their cry has come to me. When Samuel saw, saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall restrain my people. Then Saul approached Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me where the house tell me where is the house of the seer? Saul answered Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for today you shall eat with me, and in the morning I will let you go, and will tell you all that is on your mind. As for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, do not set your mind on them, for they have been found. And for whom is all that is desirable? Uh, and for whom is all that is desirable in Israel? Is it not for you and for all your father's house? Saul answered, I am not a Benjaminite, from the least of the tribes. Oh, am I not a Benjaminite from the least of all of the tribes of Israel? And is not my clan the humblest of all the clans of the tribes of Benjamin? Why then have you spoken to me in this way? Then Samuel took Saul and his young man and brought him into the hall and gave him a place at the head of those who had been invited, who were about 30 persons. And Samuel said to the cook, Bring the portion I gave you, of which I said to you, put it aside. So the cook took up the leg and what was on it and set them before Saul. And Samuel said, See, what, ha what was kept is set before you. Eat because it was kept for you until the hour appointed that you might eat with the guests. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. And when they went, and when they came down from the high place into the city, a bed was spread for Saul on the roof, and he lay down to sleep. Then at the break of dawn, Samuel called Saul up to the roof. Samuel called to Saul on the roof, up that I may send you on your way. So Saul arose, and both he and Samuel went out into the street. As they were going down to the outskirts of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to pass on before us, and when he has passed on, stop here yourself for a while, that I may make, that I may make known to you the word of God. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, <coughs> Has not the Lord anointed you to be prince over his people? And you shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you will save them from the hand of the surrounding enemies. And this shall be a sign to you that the Lord has anointed you to be prince over his heritage. When you depart from me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin at Zelzah. And they will say to you, the donkeys that you went to seek are found. And now your father has ceased to care about the donkeys and is anxious about you, saying, What shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on from there farther and come to the oak of Tabor. Three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you there, one carrying three young goats, and there another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. After that, you shall come to Gibeath Elohim, Elohim, where there is a garrison for the Philistines. And there, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them, prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now when these signs meet you, do what your hand finds to do, for God is with you. Then go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I am coming down to you to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait until you come, until I come to you and show you what you shall do. When he turned his back to leave Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. When they came to Gibeah, behold, a group of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God rushed upon him, and he prophesied among them. And when all who knew him previously saw how he prophesied with the prophets, they said to another, 
What has come over this son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And a man of the place answered, And who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? When he had finished prophesying, he came to the high place. Saul's uncle said to him, And to his servant, Where did you go? And he said, To seek the donkeys. And when we saw that they were not to be found, we went to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Please tell me what Samuel said to you. And Saul said to his uncle, He told us plainly that the donkeys had been found. But about the matter of the kingdom of God, of which Samuel had spoken, he did not tell him anything. Now Samuel called the people together to the Lord at Mizpah. And he said to the people of Israel, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all the kingdoms that were oppressing you. But today you have rejected your God, who saves you from all calamities, from all your calamities and your distresses. And you have set, said to him, set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. Then Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. He brought the tribe of Benjamin near by its clans, and the clan of the Matrites was taken by Lot, and Saul the son of Kish was taken by Lot. But when they sought him, he could not be found. So they inquired again of the Lord, Is there a man still to come? And the Lord said, Behold, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Then they ran and took him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, Do you see him who the Lord has chosen? There is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted, Long live the king. Then Samuel told the people the rights and duties of the kingship, and he read them in a book and laid it up before the Lord. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's so late. I should have been reading this a couple hours ago. Then Samuel sent all the people away, each to his own home. Saul also went to his home at Gibeah, and with him went men of valor whose hearts God has, had touched. But some worthless fellows said, How can this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no present, but he held his peace. I was at a men's night earlier. Um, it was from like 8 till 10 o'clock. And then I got home talked to Kira for a while and now it's like 11.30 so I apologize uh, it's just late it's been a long day John 15 1-17 through 17. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit already you are clean because of the word I, that I have spoken to you abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it ab abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done to you done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so, I ha so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full." This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you to, what, what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. 
Psalm 119, 25 through 32. Dela, my soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Proverbs 15, 27 and 28. Whoever is greedy for unjust gain troubles his own household, but he who hates bribes will live. The heart of the righteous ponders how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. Good stuff. Tomorrow is May 14th, and we will read 1 Samuel 11 through 13, John 15, 18 through 27, Psalm 119, 33 through 40, and Proverbs 15, 29 and 30. So, there's that. Thanks for reading with me tonight. I hope this is a blessing to you again. Um, feel free to leave a comment if you uh, read something that stuck out to you or if you heard something spoken tonight that stood out to you. Um, love to have a conversation about it. Otherwise, keep reading. Have a great night.